Most people are identified with the mind and the senses. You are identified with whatever you are aware of. Some people say, oh, I, I see myself now. Whatever you see, something else. <laughs> you understand? Oh, I feel myself now. We are feeling something else. So we are the seer, not the sin. That's the big problem. People are identified with the mind. Oh, I feel happy now. I feel I am full of doubts. I am getting old. <laughs> I am depressed. I am hungry. I am thirsty. I am restless. Who is restless? The mind. Why the mind is restless and the mind is full of doubts? Yeah. Lack of some knowledge. The greatest of all the impurities is what? Ignorance of your own self. If you are identified with the body and the mind, you really suffer because they are subject to time. They get old, sick, and die, disappear. And the mind is subject to time too, everything passing away, right? What is permanent? You see all your friends, your Love the one passing away. In order to calm the mind, every religion has the ethical rules. If you don't stop sinning, your mind never settles. Yoga is the settling of the mind into silence. When the mind starts, you lose body consciousness, notions of time, notions of forms and name, and then there you are. Consciousness. You are established in this eternal present, in this eternal now. Another, I'd say, reason why the mind don't calm down, the type of food you eat. I know that many of you already eat the right food, but those who are still eating, hold your breath now. Those who are still eating meat, flesh, you better stop it. Two reasons. The material is not good for your mind, for your body. After 90 days, that stuff becoming really part of you. According to Swami Shivananda in one of his books, your mind will never settle. Your meditation will go nowhere. You may calm your mind, feel calm and nice, forget all your problems. You may even have psychic powers, but spiritually, you don't feel the presence of the spirit. No spiritual bliss. The other reason, because you are, you are participating in violence. Someone has to kill the, the animal for you, right, to eat. I was born near a, a slaughterhouse. My father also was a, a farmer. Eat me. Get your power. Get education. Keep your teeth nice and clean. When you die, it's finished. <laughs> what a disappointment when he died a long time ago. So, when you are eating meat, your mind will have a settle. Also, you are disturbing others. Ahimsa is one of the steps of 
Yet she can do. Thou shalt not kill. That doesn't mean only killing, but don't hurt anyone. There are some monks in India, they don't walk in the evening. You know why? Are, right, afraid to step in the insect. They use it dust if they go with the light. Because the animal to the Lord Buddha, they love life, they fear against violence, they are like us. They have children, they have family. If you see any roach in your kitchen, they have children, family, husband, wife. <laughs> Don't just kill them. They have a responsibility. <laughs> Can they have it somewhere else? <laughs> you don't want them to live in your house, keep your kitchen clean. <laughs> if you don't give food to them, they move to the next apartment. Without this vow, love for all beings, you never enter the kingdom of God. You keep returning here every life passing through the same thing. Every time you die, you still with your hands empty. Of course, there is heaven. If you do something nice here, expecting the fruit, you help others, you pray, you do this, you follow the scriptures, a few of things, expecting to go to heaven. There are heaven, but it is like a vacation. <laughs> as soon as you, you reap the fruits of your action, you're back here again until you find out who you really are. Well, that is according to you. Many people just want to go to heaven. They don't want to find out who you are, what God is. That's all right. After you return many times, one day you get tired of it. Because this heaven keeps coming to an end constantly. Even if you go to heaven, what are you going to be there? Going to do there? Sit there and stay to place for thousands of years for eternity. God is here, you are here. God has pertained so many people. No cell phone, no food, no car, no boyfriend. That's going to be a torture. <laughs> so the real heaven is within you. Through deep meditation of samadhi, when you go beyond the mind, you realize that your Supreme Self and God are exactly the same. And how happy you are now. When you remove all your ego, all your personal things, pay all your sins and repent, when this disappears, what remains? God. But you still have your free will, you may help the creation. No. Not to go to heaven, stay there. And how many people are okay, helping, help you? How many people die for you? You're just going, when you leave the body, just go and that's it. Like yogis, like uh, Yogananda up there, these are enlightened beings who just volunteer to come. They don't have to come here, but to help. But to help your brothers and sisters and your mothers from the past. I think I'll shut up now. <laughs> So get the little scripture, study of the self, self-knowledge. Keep the etchkaroos and watch what you eat. 
Eat dead food, fry toast food if you dare fry the toast. <laughs> you may be young now, your body is strong and they respond well with the food. But when you reach my age, you really feel what the way you have said. Just like the type of food you eat, you feel just like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I eat French fries, oh my goodness. <laughs> my knees start crack. Pain like hell. <laughs>